I think that social media is embedded into my everyday life. From the moment that I wake up in the morning to when I go to sleep at night, I'm constantly on social media. In terms of um, how it's impacted my influencer career, I suppose, I wouldn't be in the position that I am today without it. There's been many lows um, due to social media. Uh, it's inevitable with any you know, account on social media that you're trying to build with more positive and more love, you're gonna get more hate. So I think it's difficult for me to deal with hate comments and trolling and stuff because I could get a hundred lovely comments and one horrible one, and I'm just going to fixate on that horrible one. To, to overcome those issues, I think it's a case of me just experiencing it and learning from the way I dealt with it the previous time. I think no one can ever fully completely get over getting hateful comments and trolling. I think that's always going to be an issue. As you see it, you're gonna feel it. Social media has benefited me in many ways. Um, it's helped me grow my confidence. It's helped me find friends. It's helped me, you know, get to positions where I'm on TV and where I'm working with brands. It's helped me financially. So I think there's so many ways in which it's helped me, but I think the main reason it's helped me is my confidence. I think social media has lots of negative connotations because it isn't a happy place for a lot of people. Social media gives people the option to be able to voice their opinions and sometimes opinions have negative um, intentions and I think that obviously with today's society where suicide is such a massive thing and such a pressing issue, um, social media doesn't help that in any way because people are able to hide behind computers and hide behind their phones and be able to talk to another person without them even knowing exactly who it is. My favourite things with social media are probably the ability to connect with so many people throughout the whole world. So I have made friends from Australia, friends from America. That aspect of it is amazing. You're so interconnected with people and it's so quick to speak to people, you just send them a message. So I think social media has really helped with bringing people together and globalization and that sort of thing. I think it's, I think people care about their likes and followers because it's a sense of acceptance and a sense of appreciation. I think in the society that we live in today, I think we all seek others' approval and with more followers and more likes, I guess you feel more accepted and more approved as a person. I don't think my opinion on people changes dependent on their following and their, the amount of likes. I know that social media isn't used in the way that I use it by a large amount of people. I use it in order to obviously showcase what I'm wearing and to help others feel empowered. But I know that some other people just do it so that they can connect with their friends. So I personally wouldn't judge somebody dependent on how many followers or likes that they have. But I do know that that is the case with a lot of other people. So as we can see from Chloe's interview, I feel like she is extremely more confident than she was and the way she speaks about how much social media has helped her, especially with her profession as well. Um, I feel as if I'm, I'm happy for her, but although, although it, you try and portray yourself online so much to make yourself look better than other people and to compare yourself, there's still so many little things that can make you feel so upset and things like that. So now, now I'd like to speak to you guys, speak to the public. So now we're going to go up and talk to the general public about your thoughts on social media and the effects it has on mental health. Uh, I don't really have any insecurities, but I think when, even if I upload or if anybody uploads, I think I'm always consciously thinking, do other people think we look good no matter how good we think we look? It can help to my insecurities when I see other people um, being positive for insecurities to do with body confidence and stuff. But also it can be negative because a lot of people get hate for like the way they look and the way they act on social media. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I thought that was quite a cool photo. Why has that not got many likes? But I also, because like, there's so much stuff on Instagram and people are following so many people, sometimes you don't always see the people you follow and stuff like that, so I kind of keep that in mind. I think I'm more bothered with Card Coza and my band because it's like, that's kind of more important that I'm getting the audience engagement. When posting a photo, I always, I don't think about what other people will think about it. If I like it, I'll post it. But it's right in the captions is what is a bit 
quite scary because I feel like if I want to say something, I feel like people might judge what I want to say. Because people are so heavily influenced by models, actors, actresses, influencers online, I think uh, because they look up to these people, they don't quite get why other people aren't following the same trends. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an overly fashionable person, I don't follow brands, I wear what I like. Other people only wear brands and that's because they think labels and names have a tag to them and they judge others for that, whether that's to do with wealth or just style and they think it looks cool or not. Uh, yeah, people heavily judge others for how they dress. A lot of people will have, like, put a photo up online and kind of want a bit of confidence boost and stuff like that. And, you know, for that it's quite nice, you know, you can put photos online and people show that they like that it kind of it gives you the idea oh maybe they like you but um obviously when you don't get that many likes and stuff like that, it's like why people don't like me and that's why people can always when you take social media you can never take it too seriously in my opinion it's like it is just something online it's not a physical description of who you are and um how people perceive you i think So now I'm going to be speaking to someone called Brandon Lindley and he's actually someone who's extremely dear and special to me in my life. He, um, he really suffered from online interaction and things that have happened to him in his life has ultimately led him to having a seven month social media break and we're going to find it really interesting to see his thoughts on how vicious social media can be. I feel social media has so many negative connotations, first and foremost, just based on the fact that human beings, we can't help ourselves but compare ourselves to other people. Social media in my life nowadays is a lot different to how it used to be. Um, I was going through a bit of a rough patch back in like the period of 2018 and what I found myself doing was that when I was stressed or anxious about these situations, I would lose myself in social media. Um, just because I felt like it was a distraction from these things that I was feeling. So the way I came, or the way I overcame my social media issues is, I think the first step is actually identifying that you have an issue. Identifying that the trends that you are following, you know, so you stress about a certain issue, you feel a certain way, which is a, normally a negative feeling. And the first thing you do is you go on social media. And I feel like a lot of people do this without actually realizing that they are doing it. I feel that Posting a photo on social media does give me a form of anxiety, um, especially when I feel like the photo deserves 100 plus likes, for instance, and the photo then gets maybe like 60 or 80. Strange how it can affect the way you view yourself. So you really do need to make that mental note of not checking on likes. I, I, I've noticed people, I think this is, a, this is a problem that a lot of people don't want to talk about, and I think it affects a lot more people than uh, they put out there. I've seen people who post photos and within the next two hours they'll remove the photo and it's because it didn't get the likes that they feel like it deserved and then two days later when maybe the stream of people on that platform is more they'll post it again. So it becomes this point of it's not about the photo anymore, it's not about putting the photo out there because you are proud of the photo, you put it out there because oh, I want more likes for this photo and I feel like people who say they're not posting for the likes are maybe lying because um, I feel like that's where it stems from and I think it is a big problem in today's society. I think as a society we're confusing being connected with people, a real human connection, with being in contact with people. I think social media is great for putting you into contact with people and keeping that con uh, contact between like if you're living far away from someone. But in terms of a real human connection, I think it's terrible and I think the evidence is all around us. And it's only when you really sort of realize that there's an issue and you sort of put your phone down and look around a room and you notice how many people are in the room but not present. Um, I know I've got family members who comparing yourself to your friends on social media can really cause trouble um, with your mental health and with the way you view yourself. So I think it's a great step from Instagram, taking away the amount of likes because um, I really do feel like a, it's going to help the people and also social media platforms are noticing that there is a definite issue uh, within the app. 
So as we've gathered from that interview, we can see how there's so many positive sides of social media and there's also so many negative. I feel as though with Brandon, I feel for him, because it was causing him so much anxiety, so much stress, so much overthinking that he wasn't concentrating on the things that really mattered, he, he needed to do it. But people are different. Some people might feel like they have to be around social media to help them concentrate. They have to be around social media to make themselves feel more connected. Um, but like the world is so huge everyone has their own opinions about social media it doesn't matter whether we're right or wrong um, I say everyone's entitled to their own opinion so in today's society and obviously reflecting back on your work how common would you say these sorts of problems are relating directly to social media obviously as human beings we're affected and impacted by so many things but in terms of like the kind of prevalence i suppose of let's say social anxiety there's about like 12 percent would experience aspects of social anxiety and then with that 12 percent, there's there's an obvious impact in regards to things that you come into contact with whether it's the television whether it's films movies um social media all that is going to impact how you see yourself. So obviously in regards to your profession, if you were to post something of yourself online, a picture or, or a post or anything like that, and let's say it got an underwhelming amount of likes for what you what you would expect, would that affect you in any way? I would, pro I would probably not be truthful to myself if I was to say it wouldn't affect me in some way based on that kind of preset precedent of putting things on and getting 30 likes or so. Um, per post, uh, that in itself becomes a precedent, that in itself becomes the norm or becomes a pattern. And then once, you know, that kind of need isn't met, you are going to be starting to kind of question, okay, yeah. so all the previous ones had 30, well, what's going on with this one? What was wrong with this one? Once you start to look into it deeply, then you start to kind of go through those uh, kind of mental critiques, uh, trying to identify what was wrong with this one what you can do differently next time to make sure that you maintain those kind of 30 likes average that you uh, are used to getting when i post something out it's just for the sake of posting it out uh, whereas other people like it like to share how they look or like to get that kind of feedback through the work that i do i encourage people to um self-assurance from internal so you know it's 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 what you think of yourself as opposed to what others think of you. There is a very deep impact and obviously a lot to be said about the anxiety and the insecurities mm -hmm. that can be caused through social media. But why don't you think people can just look at these um, online platforms and take them for what they are? I suppose it all boils down to human psychology. I mean, prior to the invention of the likes, there was a lot of research that, that was to formulate and create the options of liking because as humans, that's just generally what we like to do we like to be quite competitive but i believe as a human being we are born negatively um as a child you were raised in a negative perception and um, parents and adults are always forever telling children not to do something which enforces the viewpoint that you are wrong in some way is to, to do things in the correct way i kind of strongly believe personally that that creates this sense of i'm a bad person i am wrong in order for me to be liked or to be approved, I need to be right. As adults or parents, we do this in order to protect our children or offspring in the right way, teach them the difference between right and wrong. It's okay not to know something because the whole challenge is to learn from that in order to improve yourself. Uh, whereas through our, I suppose, mainstream education, the whole focus is on the ticks that you get not the crosses we're always kind of judged and marked on that as opposed to the opposite which then creates a sense of anxiety and worry um, in children and in all of us to kind of strive to um, get those ticks and get those uh, correct percentages whereas if you remove that the anxiety won't be there but that same drive would be there to learn from the mistakes so then if a child gets excited every time they get something wrong, because it's an opportunity for them to learn to do it a different way, that fosters a desire for learning. 
Whereas if a child gets something wrong and then they're kind of uh, punished essentially for that, they are less likely to want to try again in case they get it wrong because they don't want to experience that negativity that they got. There is that research that says, you know, as as humans, we we um, make a judgment on what we see um, at about a tenth of a second. As soon as you see it, you've got to make a judgment on what it is that you're seeing because innately that's been um, a mechanism that's enabled us to kind of survive. I tend to kind of share the view that there are only two sets of emotions that we have as human beings, and that's love and fear. And all the other emotions are remnants from the love. All the bad things are from fear. But in order to protect yourself, if you focus on all the good things all the time and you miss one bad thing, that's detrimental to your well-being. So the focus always has to be on the negative in order for you to avoid minimizing your lifespan, I suppose. Yeah. If you ask somebody yeah. to list all the good things about themselves, they might start really well, but then they get to a point where they start to kind of scratch their heads. If you ask the opposite of all the bad things, they, they can go on forever because we want to improve. We want to get better. We've been kind of set in this mindset that um, having something bad is the wrong thing. So let's identify it and move past it as opposed to having something bad is an opportunity. It's a good thing for us to kind of learn from. I feel like everyone has their own opinions on social media and the effects it has on their mental health. They probably have their own stories. People may say that it does connect us. People will probably say that the does disconnect them from life, from important things. And there seems to be, from what I can see, a pattern that's really been embedded into, into this, this social media frenzy. And that's that we're all too, too like worried and too obsessed with looking good online and obsessed with portraying ourselves as something that we're not. And I feel like the real matter is, is really like like focusing on what matters, whether that's family, whether that's friends, whether that's your own mental health. And I feel like this is something that we do really need to think about. But that's just up to you guys and how and how it how it affects you in the real world.